The Apple II is an iconic computer, and one that is a lot of fun to program for. Here's how to get started. Step 1, you need to get an Apple II. There are many different versions of the Apple II, including but not limited to the original Apple II, the 2 Plus, the 2E, the 2C, and the 2GS. The following guide will deal with either the original Apple II or the 2E specifically. Just keep in mind that whatever version of the Apple II you pick to work with will be slightly different from the others. Once you decide what kind of Apple II you want, you either need to buy a physical machine or emulate one. Buying the machine is fairly straightforward, though keep in mind with computers these old extra expansions may or may not have already been added. A word on emulators here. For Windows, the Apple Win emulator is a great option for all these Apple II versions shown here. This is the program that I use to emulate the Apple II when I'm not using my real one. For Linux, I would go with the Lin Apple emulator, which is a ported version of the Apple Win emulator. If you have a Mac PC and want to run any of these things, I can't give a personal recommendation since I've never tried one out, but online it seems like the Virtual 2 emulator is one of the more popular versions. And if you don't actually want to install anything on your computer or just play around for a bit, check out this JavaScript Apple II emulator, which can be run from your browser. Now that you have an Apple II in some form, let's get to programming. With this computer, there are two main options. Option number one will be basic. The Apple II actually has basic stored in ROM. Once you boot up your Apple II, simply hit the control reset keys. On an emulator, the key you need to press will be different, since your keyboard probably doesn't have a reset key. For Apple Win, you can use Ctrl plus F2 or Ctrl Break. Once you've hit those keys, simply type in your basic line number and command. In the description will be some references to both watchable and readable guides teaching the basics of basic. To give a few pointers now, you can list your program with the list command, run your program with the run command, and you can break from your program if you're caught in a loop like this by typing Control c Programming option number two is assembly. As with many machines of this era, the Apple II uses a 6502 8-bit processor. But to begin writing our assembly code, we'll first need an assembler, a program that will take the code that we write and turn it into something that we can run. Personally, I use a program called EDASM, but I've also used the Merlin assembler, which was in some ways easier and in some ways more difficult. Basically, any one of these options I'm showing on screen right now will get the job done. It will be easiest to get a copy of this software digitally from the online archives. If you have a real Apple II, at the end of this video, I'll talk about copying this digital file to a 5 and a quarter inch disk. Once you have your assembler software, boot it up and you can begin writing your assembly code. Again, I've listed below the resources to learn how to use both 6502 assembly and the assembler itself. Whatever assembler you choose might be a little different, but I'll share some basic commands that will work for sure using EDASM. You can add to the program by hitting A, then type your assembly code. Once you finish, use Control Q and enter to exit. Save your code with save plus your file name, and then you can assemble it into a binary file using the command ASM plus your file name. Now you can get out of the assembler itself and run your program using brun plus your new binary file name. Here are a few more things that you might find helpful regarding controlling the Apple II. Using BASIC, it's easy to both write text out and take input from the user, and the program that you can see on the screen right now is an example of how this can be done. You will begin to understand more as you read the guides below. With assembly, doing the same thing will require a little more than just three lines of code, but the easy way to do this is to call subroutines at certain memory addresses to print text and get user input. The following program does nearly what the program in BASIC we showed before it did. You can see why assembly programming is a bit more complex, although I will admit I am not an expert at writing assembly code and I know that this could be improved. Now at this point, you might want to turn on graphics mode. The question is, which one? On the Apple II, there are two graphics modes, low resolution mode and high resolution mode. In low resolution mode, the screen is 40 by 48 with 16 colors available. In high resolution mode, the screen is 280 by 192, although each pixel color is determined by the adjacent pixel, giving you only 140 by 192 if you want consistent coloring. And although this mode does have a high resolution, the trade-off is that only four colors in addition to black and white are available, and not every pixel can be every color. This may seem complex, but it is easy to work with once you understand it. 
With basic, just type in GR to go to low res graphics mode and HDR to go to high res mode. On the bottom of the screen, you may see a few lines of text. This is called being in mixed mode. It can be very helpful if you want to see what you're typing on this screen, but it can be turned off with the command poke 49234, 0. Low res graphics can be controlled with the commands on the left shown here, and high res commands are given on the right. With assembly, we only have to read or write to these certain memory addresses shown here to switch to our desired mode. So to change to low resolution graphics mode with mix mode turned off, you could write the following commands in your program. As for actually drawing graphics to the screen, with a low res screen, we can again call different monitor subroutines as seen here, which will do things like set the color and plot to the screen. The high resolution mode is a bit more complex and that's something that I won't detail right now, but I would recommend reading this book, High Res Graphics and Animation Using Assembly Language. The final trick I'll go over right now is copying a digital disk file to a physical one. You will need a working Apple II disk drive for this, but first we'll be using a genius piece of software called C2T. Again, GitHub link down below. With this software, you can take your disk file, for example, your edasm.disk, and first turn it into a .aif sound file by opening up the command line, navigating to the bin file and wherever the C2T files are located on your computer, and typing in the following command. You can try to turn this into a WAV file instead, but I found it only worked for me as an AIF file. Next, copy this file onto your phone and turn on Do Not Disturb. That way, no other sounds from notifications will interfere with what we're about to do. Now, using a standard 3.5mm male-to-male audio cable, plug one end into your phone's audio jack and the other into the back of the Apple II's cassette input port. It will be the one on the right with the arrow pointing down as shown here. Now boot up your Apple II, hit control reset, and then insert any blank disk into the disk drive. If you put in a disk before now, your computer will try to boot with that disk, so wait until after you type control reset. All you have to do now is type load and then play the audio file on your phone, and hopefully it will work. If it doesn't, make sure the sound on your phone is up and that the connection with the audio cord is tight. I even had to take my phone case off in order to get it to work. If all went well, it will copy the data from your digital file to your physical disk, giving you complete access to the library of Apple II software that can be found online. This should get you started with programming the Apple II. If you have any more questions about the process or other things that I covered in this video, feel free to ask in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching.